Well, we've already seen the results when B-movie kingpin Roger Corman tries to cash in on both Star Wars and Alien. And with Jurassic Park 5, Jurassic World 2, Fallen Kingdom of the Crystal Skull opening later this year, let's see what happens when he tries to get some of that sweet Jurassic Park money. And if you guessed a whole lot of dinosaur gore, you'd be correct. Carnosaur is a 1993 sci-fi horror movie that, as I mentioned earlier, is usually considered Roger Corman's attempt to cash in on Jurassic Park. But what's notable about this one is that unlike some of the other cash-ins Corman's produced, he didn't wait to make sure Jurassic Park was a hit before making it. As soon as he heard Steven Spielberg was making Jurassic Park, Corman decided to quickly put out his own dinosaur movie, to the point where Carnosaur was actually released about a month before Jurassic Park which I guess would make this movie a preemptive cash-in? This actually proved to be a pretty effective strategy, as I can remember this movie getting a decent amount of hype at the time for such a low-budget movie. And it even managed to get a thumbs up from none other than Gene Siskel. Although Roger Ebert was a lot less impressed with the movie, naming it the worst film of 1993. And as a reminder, he liked The Happening. What? No! So like a lot of Roger Corman cash-in movies, if Jurassic Park was the big, slick, crowd-pleasing dinosaur movie of 1993, Carnosaur is its sleazy, exploitation movie cousin. Although if you want to see something really sleazy, you'll have to go with another Jurassic Park cash-in. You know, I just realized, if Roger Corman made a movie called Carnosaur today, it'd probably be about some weird half-dinosaur, half-car monster. And I know dinosaurs and birds are related, but these effects seem a little cheap. Also like Jurassic Park, this movie's based off a book, which was actually published several years before Jurassic Park. Damn, too bad Corman didn't make this movie a couple years sooner. Then he could have said Spielberg was trying to cash in on his movie. Ah, uh, come on, movie, do you have to keep showing so much factory farm footage of chickens? You're making me hungry here. After the credits, we open on what appears to be a Legion of Doom meeting. I'm just saying, this guy could be Lex Luthor. Oh, advanced research projects, huh? Yeah, well, they might want to research how to properly light their boardrooms. Man, Coca-Cola really will put their product in anything, won't they? Maybe I should shoot him an email. They're meeting to ask about a famed geneticist named Dr. Tiptree, who is now apparently working for a poultry company to engineer a superior breed of chicken. Huh. I guess the 90s were a rough time for geneticists. Dr. Tiptree is played by Diane Ladd, because if you're gonna cash in on Jurassic Park, might as well cast a relative of one of the stars of that movie. I'm not sure about the health standards at this company, though. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, all over me. Sorry. Yeah, I can tell by the way you sneezed right on me, asshole. That's not the only problem with this company, as by the looks of it, they have been feeding these chickens way too many growth hormones. Oops, my mistake. It actually gave birth to one of the aliens from V. And it wouldn't be a 90s low-budget horror movie without a Clint Howard appearance. Never seen such nervous chickens. Maybe they're nervous because they're scared you're going to try and fuck them, Clint. And does everyone who works at this company need a lesson in how to be sanitary? I'm worried that when this guy stops to go to the bathroom, he's gonna wipe his ass with one of the chickens. Thankfully, this movie doesn't take very long to get to the dinosaur killing, although at 10 minutes in, it's still technically behind Jurassic Park. Back in the early 90s, people who couldn't afford HBO were stuck watching the home brain surgery channel. Better a bottle in front of me than a front of lobotomy. You sure you didn't already have a lobotomy? I mean, you are wearing sunglasses indoors at night. His drinking time is interrupted when he's forced to tell some kids to get the hell off of my quarry. And take it easy, movie. We're still at the beginning. Save that for the climax. Right now, he's got to catch this burglar from a home security commercial. I can't believe it. It's a lady. He calls the local sheriff about the trespasser. Not that it matters, since he just ends up passing out right away. Even Jan Michael Vincent would say this guy needs to cut back on the boozing. Right now, I'll bet the sheriff's glad he's in this movie and not Jurassic Park. Otherwise, that'd be him lying on a stretcher. Maybe, uh... Bobcat. Bobcat? Yeah, Bobcat. Look, unless it's combined with another animal, Corman's not interested. Well, just because this guy's dead doesn't mean we have to let all this prime meat go to waste. The McRib is coming back soon, after all. Meanwhile, the guard and the sheriff go looking for the people who are trespassing, which can only be the work of damn dirty hippies. Or maybe extras from a 90s music video. So is she here? 
No. You know, you could probably identify her if you didn't wear those sunglasses all the time. Actually, I think James Douche here might have had another reason for not identifying her. I want to thank you for what you did. I mean, the way you held me at gunpoint and then almost had me arrested but then didn't? You're my hero. And you can call me Doc. No one else does. Why's that? It's because my pay keeps getting docked for drinking on the job. The girl's name is Thrush, presumably because she has a yeast infection in her mouth. These two are really going to be surprised when they find out they're not in a 90s coming-of-age indie drama. Hey man, I'm gonna go take a piss, I'll be right back. Actually, maybe that is what this movie is. In addition to the gore, this movie also has some valuable scientific info about dinosaurs. For example... <laughs> raptors go straight for your dick! Remember everyone, if the car's a rockin', don't come a knockin', or else a pissed off dinosaur puppet will disembowel you. Huh. Okay, so that's what dinosaurs sounded like. I will say this, at least this movie depicts raptors as being small, which makes this a lot more accurate than Jurassic Park was. Their only mistake is they actually should have made it look even more like a chicken. Although, it does have other inconsistencies. What's he saying? I can't tell. I, I think he's speaking Spanish. Why? He was clearly speaking English earlier. He says it's eating him. I guess he means the pain. Oh no, they can't understand me. Maybe if I speak German, that'll help. Oh, and here's another interesting fact about dinosaurs. <laughs> Apparently the raptor is the fucking roadrunner. Mmm, <laughs> tastes just like chicken. And speaking of food... Is that... Not the juiciest, sweetest, freshest tasting blueberry pie you've ever tasted. Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, why are you sprawled across the table? And come on, movie, you already got Gene Siskel to give you a thumbs up. All the blueberry pie in the world isn't gonna make Ebert change his mind. I'm beginning to think Dr. Tiptree might be up to something nefarious. She tricks this guy into going to a Laser Floyd show, and when it comes to the lasers, they do not fuck around. Oh, and she also has her own Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> Admittedly, that is pretty evil, but honestly, if I could engineer my own pet Tyrannosaurus, I probably would. Oh, right, I forgot there was a plotline about hippies trying to prevent construction from going on here. Stop the pipeline, man! We're not building a pipeline, we're laying the foundation for a new orphanage. Oh, well, we already chained ourselves here, so could you go get us some snacks? Luckily for them, Doc really doesn't give a shit about doing his job. And what is with the backgrounds in this movie? It... Oh, <laughs> okay, never mind. Hey, Doc, I heard that kid you found was all carved up like a Christmas turkey. I heard it was some sort of psycho cannibal job. Hmm. You've been watching too many of them Italian zombie flicks. Yeah, if I had a nickel for every time a woman said that to me. Meanwhile, the hippies are about to find out that chaining yourself to something in a Roger Corman movie isn't a great idea. Greetings, green brother. <laughs> yeah, you people may love nature, but nature doesn't give a fuck about you. And I think the raptor may have undergone a growth spurt since we last saw it, since its fingers are now as big as this guy's entire torso. As if getting attacked by a dinosaur wasn't bad enough, even one of the stagehands starts harassing them. You know, maybe my dad was right. Maybe I should have finished college instead of becoming an environmental activist. Doc is really upset by all this. He was hoping to kill all these hippies himself. But the most attractive one survived, and that's what's really important. Anyway, time for more dinosaur facts. But in each successive killing, the wounds have been deeper. Either there's more than one, or else it's growing. Growing real fast. Yeah, I'll say. At this rate, by the end of the movie, its fingers will be a mile long. Back at Doc's trailer, Thrush discovers that despite his cynical exterior, Doc really has the soul of an artist. Or maybe a serial killer. And ever hear of knocking, asshole? So, is the raptor bulletproof, or is everyone in this movie just a really bad shot? Meanwhile, Doc discovers the poultry company workers and decides to investigate. And fortunately for him, Tiptree has no idea who works for her and just lets him right in. Time to get to the bottom of this mystery. So you got it too. Got what? The fever.
It's true. Back in 1993, everyone had dinosaur fever. And I suppose it's time we had one of these in the movie. <laughs> Eh, you know what? We're 45 minutes in and there wasn't an annoying music sting, so I'll let it slide. Bad news, your eggs seem to be rotten, but on the plus side, at least they came with a prize. What in creation are you? I'm the baby! Please kill me! Ugh. The sheriff's not the only one who's surprised. Clint Howard just found out somebody killed the chicken he was about to fuck. <laughs> And so ends another 90s Clint Howard role. Back at the lab, Tiptree tells Doc about her plan, which involves giving everyone the flu so they'll have to use up all their sick days at the same time. Okay, actually she's engineered a disease which will simultaneously wipe out the human race and repopulate the Earth with dinosaurs. And just how does she plan to do that? By making every woman on Earth dino-pregnant, that's how. Push. <gasps> Congratulations! It's an abomination against nature. So how do you like your eggs? Scrambled or sunny side up? <laughs> uh, it's funny because a woman just died a second ago. Doc shouldn't be surprised Tiptree's been making dinosaur eggs. After all, Diane Ladd was in a movie called Embryo, and by the looks of it, she also managed to create the disease from the crazies. So why does Tiptree want to wipe out humanity and replace them with dinosaurs anyway? The Earth was not made for us. She was made for the dinosaurs. The Earth was scaled to their dimensions. Human beings are ants crawling through their living rooms. Okay, again, I just want to point out that velociraptors were actually small. That's really fabulous. Like a great theme park. And in case you didn't know what this movie was cashing in on, Tiptree's doing all this because she thinks humanity's destroying the world with pollution. I would think designing more efficient solar panels would be more effective than knocking women up with dinosaurs. But at least her disease gives the movie an excuse for more gore. All right, fellas, bust out the cigars and then kill that thing. Just imagine for a minute a green, fertile planet. <sighs> With peaceful beings. Oh yeah, these things are real peaceful. Speaking of which, where is that dinosaur? Now you may think it's in poor taste for this movie to imply that the dinosaur ate a dog, but just remember, Spielberg did the same thing. And come on, Sheriff, there's only 20 minutes left. You're so close to surviving this movie. Oh shit, he actually caught the dinosaur. Even Samuel L. Jackson ended up as raptor food in Jurassic Park. Okay, now all he has to do is shoot it again from a safe distance to make sure it's dead and- Oh, you fucking idiot. I just want some piece of gold. You blew it! Oh well, at least he gives me an opportunity to do this. I swallow your soul! I swallow your soul! I swallow this. <laughs> Even if the dinosaur is dead, what are they going to do about the disease that's infecting people? Is there a raw viral serum? What difference does it make? It's too late. You know as well as I do, if there's a raw viral serum, there's a chance of an antivirus. Uh, yeah, sure, I knew that. And besides, she's trying to destroy humanity. There's no way she'd make a cure. Oh, she did? Okay, I guess in case of plot convenience, break glass. And don't go through the laser T-Rex tunnel, dummy. Just go out the way you came in. Hmm, either Doc is about to get eaten by the T-Rex, or the Who are about to play won't get fooled again. And hang on a second there, Doc, you can't escape just yet. We built a full-size T-Rex animatronic for this movie, and damn it, we are gonna use it. And hey, might as well knock off Alien 2 while we're at it. Doc manages to escape before the T-Rex finally breaks out of the facility. Hopefully he can get the cure to Thrush in time. Oh, hey, you're a light sleeper. <laughs> I wasn't gonna go any further, I swear. 
Given that this was made in the 90s, it figures that the only way the disease can be cured is by injecting somebody with Mountain Dew. The government, on the other hand, has a more direct approach. This is what happens to people who don't have health insurance. Even if you cured Thrush, there's still a T-Rex on the loose. Time for an epic battle between dinosaur and construction equipment. Doc and Thrush have a lot to choose from, so naturally, they hop in the two smallest things on site. Ah, uh, come on, man, don't use those! Get in a digger! Didn't you see Dinosaurus? As I mentioned earlier, they really did build a full-size T-Rex animatronic for this movie, so it's a little weird that they barely end up using it and instead focus on a much smaller hand puppet T-Rex that doesn't even really match up with the full-size version. Oh well, I guess this way Corman could save money by using some of his grandson's Tonka toys. And I told you you should have gotten into something heavier. After Thrush accidentally knocks herself out by... Not being the lead, I guess. It's up to Doc to kill the T-Rex and get some good shots for the back of the DVD. Oh, wait a minute, I get it now. He used a bobcat to tie into the whole bobcats being dangerous conversation earlier. I mean, he still should have hopped into something bigger, but I get it now. I hate wildlife. Yeah, fuck you, T-Rex. No badass closing shot in this movie for you. Alright, so Doc managed to get a cure for the virus, and both of the dinosaurs they could afford to show in this movie are dead. Looks like everything's gonna be okay. Psych! Alright, it's sad that they got killed, but if it makes you feel any better, all the alcohol in Doc's body made sure he burned really fast. And no, I didn't do anything to this footage, the credits really are going backwards. Thumbs up from Gene Siskel aside, Carnosaur wasn't exactly loved by critics, and John Brosnan, the author of the book it was based on, called the movie crap, but it was still a moderate success at the box office, making $1.8 million, which may not sound like much, but was still around twice what it cost to make. It even led to a series of sequels, both official and... not so official. So, how does this movie stack up to the other two Roger Corman cash-ins I've done on this show? Eh... While Galaxy of Terror and Battle Beyond the Stars were definitely low budget, they actually managed to stretch their budgets pretty well, mainly due to having a young James Cameron as a production designer. Carnosaur, on the other hand, feels like a direct-to-video movie. In fact, while doing research for this episode, I was surprised to learn that it even got a theatrical release, as I could have sworn it went straight to video. I mean, that's what it feels like. The whole virus plotline is pretty inventive, and what dinosaur action we do get is appropriately gory, but there really isn't a whole lot of it here. After all, there's only two dinosaurs in the entire movie, which I guess is still more than Epic Days of the Dinosaur had, but it is probably the only time you'll get to see a multiple Academy Award nominee give birth to a dinosaur, so it's got that going for it. And since I mentioned sequels, am I going to be talking about those in the future? Did you even need to ask? What the hell is extraneous organic matter? Yeah, that's my wife you're talking about. Strangely orgasmic matter. Thought Roger Corman was done making dinosaur movies after the first Carnosaur? Uh-uh. He knows a franchise when he sees one. After all, he made three Sharktopus movies. And, just like he made sure the first Carnosaur was released before Jurassic Park, Corman managed to pump out a sequel two whole years before Jurassic Park got one, which means this movie isn't a knockoff of The Lost World. Instead, it's something else. So after the first Carnosaur was a success at the box office, relatively speaking, it was only natural that it would get a sequel. After all, if they can make 16 witchcraft movies and counting, then I say there can be more than one Carnosaur movie. And so, in 1995, we got Carnosaur 2, Carnosaurer. Now, unlike the first Carnosaur, this one didn't get a thumbs up from Gene Siskel, but the cover does have this quote on it. Put aliens and Jurassic Park in a blender and Carnosaur 2 is what you get. And that might be the most accurate thing ever put on a DVD cover, because this movie's plot is an almost beat-for-beat -beat remake of Aliens, just with dinosaurs. Hey, the first movie was already a cash-in of Jurassic Park, and the way I figure, if you're gonna copy a movie sequel, might as well make it a good one. Besides, this is probably the closest we'll ever get to seeing a live-action Dino Crisis movie. 
So to recap the ending of the first movie, a rogue geneticist had created a virus that caused women to die giving birth to dinosaurs, and the only cure for the virus had been accidentally destroyed by the government, leaving mankind seemingly doomed to extinction. And if you're wondering how this movie follows up on that, don't worry, because it completely ignores that ending. Hey, it's got dinosaurs in it, which is enough for this to qualify as a sequel. On the plus side, they seem to have upped the font budget here compared to the first one, although I guess they couldn't afford footage from the previous movie and had to record it off the TV. Also, considering it's basically a copy of Aliens, am I the only one who thinks they missed a golden opportunity to name this movie Carnosaurs? I'm not really sure what's going on here, but something tells me Freddy Krueger is involved somehow. Who's there? See? That guy thinks he's in a slasher movie. I said, who's there? Whoever it is, you better stop it. I've got two days till retirement, and I just put new pictures of my kids in my wallet. Huh? Ah! <laughs> well, who could have seen that coming? If this movie really wanted to be like Aliens, this is the part where they'd find out Thrush has been in suspended animation for over 50 years. And if you're trying to imply that dinosaurs are responsible for what's going on, this guy should really have a pet chicken. Anyway, time to meet more of our characters. Man, we could get in big trouble for this. Keep an eye out and trust me. Who's this kid supposed to be, the Edward Furlong John Connor stand-in? You're ripping off the wrong James Cameron movie, damn it! Awesome! What is it, man? Industrial strength blammo, dude. Aw, who's a cute little domestic terrorist? This is Jesse, who I guess is supposed to be our Newt stand-in for the movie. And aw, oh, man, he gets caught before he can blow some shit up. Thanks a lot, Captain Buzzkill. But just because he was caught trying to steal high explosives doesn't mean he can't be taught how to operate heavy machinery. Whatever you do, don't throw this lever up. It operates the automatic doors over there. 150 feet. Straight down. Alright, I got it. I know how we're gonna kill the T-Rex at the end. You don't have to keep telling me. Even though this kid is the movie's newt stand-in, I think he should have been called Weasel. You could go to jail for what you did today. Messing with those cables. Cables? What are you talking about? Look, don't lie to me. Uh, if you caught him trying to steal explosives and think he sabotaged this place's electrical system, maybe you should send him to jail. You can tell things are getting serious around this place because another random guy gets POV'd to death. I don't know why in the hell they're showing this facility before everybody got killed. That part was only in the director's cut of Aliens. With communication at the facility suddenly cut off, it's time to call in some space marines, mercenaries, technicians, whoever the hell these people are. So anyway, last night I'm hammering this girl and things are going very well and the phone rings so I'm thinking on the other end it's my wife. So, of course, it didn't help plumbing much. Please tell me this guy dies first. And in case you didn't know, this guy's supposed to be the annoying one. What the fuck is wrong with you, Mom? You guns and roses looking bitch! Guns and roses? This guy looks more like a winger fan to me. Anyway, our main character is Jack Reed, played by character actor John Savage. And considering how prolific his film career's been, I wouldn't be surprised if he finished filming all of his scenes before his lunch break. But what about our other character actors? It's probably the usual. Yeah, a bunch of college kids standing around with their peckers in their hands. You're a real classy dude, Monk, you know that? Is it me, or does Monk look like the kind of guy who uses cocaine as a coffee sweetener? Yikes, Nick Fury is looking rough. I can see why he turned command over to Cliff DeYoung. He has a lot more experience with 90s horror movies. So, what's the situation? Yucca Mountain is a military-operated uranium mine. Anyway, last night it blew its load again. Well, I don't think that's such a big deal. I mean, happens to everybody from time to time. These guys are called in to investigate after communication was suddenly cut off from the mining facility shown earlier. And so far, I'm not sure if this movie is really a copy of Aliens. Go to town and marry Bon Uncle John! See? They're clearly copying Predator. Alright, look alive, people. We don't have a permit to film here, and the workers arrive in two hours, so let's be quick. First, though, they gotta find a way to get into the facility. It's no dice. It's fried. So what's next? Well, there's one other thing I can try. Hey! For me. And if that didn't work, he was gonna hit it with his fist and go, "Ay!" Almost immediately, though, they discover that something bad went down here. Oh, tell me that's not blood. Nope, it's diarrhea. Sometimes that happens when you die. Now, while in Aliens, Newt managed to survive by carefully hiding in the facility's ventilation system, this kid apparently survived by just sitting in this one corner the entire time. Hey guys, they 
found someone out there. And it's about goddamn time, too. This guy's a real prick. They're right not to trust Cliff DeYoung. After all, he is dressed like Paul Reiser from Aliens. And is it me, or does this place look a little weird for just a uranium mine? I mean, this huge, big, gigantic-ass computer just for pulling rocks out of the ground don't sound normal to me. Oh, so the movie actually points that out. Well, shit. Here's one difference between this movie and Aliens. While Newt managed to cope with her situation pretty well, Jesse seems to have been rendered catatonic by what happened here. They mostly come out at night, brah. Mostly. And you don't need to flash back to what happened, we already saw it. Anyway, time for our heroes to enter the hive, also known as the basement. That's two tens, Monk. Oh, that's real cute, Monk. Is that your sperm count or your IQ? Yeah, dick! All right, even if it is copying aliens, at least it gives us the best line in the movie. But Spider here isn't the only one with one-liners. Whoa, I may die me 69 lay. Stop your grinning and drop your linen. Even though Cliff DeYoung tells everyone they're not allowed to go down to the facility's lower levels, they ignore him and go down anyway. Seems fine. I can't see the Harmon randomly wandering around a place that handles radioactive materials. Read you disobey the director to Kahana with all your people back upstairs! Yo, check it out. This place practically glowing in the dark here. Well, you should probably get the hell out of there then. And wait a second, something tells me there aren't any aliens down here. I'll tell you what's going on. We're half an hour in and the dinosaurs are already picking off veteran character actors. On the plus side, at least they made some new dinosaurs for this movie instead of just recycling stuff they made for the first one. They've even got a brand new raptor pimp slap. Okay, it's all now. Yeah, that's a bad idea. <laughs> Oh shit, the dinosaurs just killed Juana, man! Quick, jog for your lives! The pilot manages to make it to the dropship, uh, I mean, helicopter. But wait a second, wasn't there a scene like this in Aliens? Okay, admittedly the effects there weren't the greatest, but to be fair, you could also say the same thing about the crash in Aliens. Come on, we can hump it! Yeah, yeah hump it. it up. Oh, wait a minute, it's desert 80 miles all around! If those things don't get us, the sun will... Game over, man! Game over! This is a chicken hunt! Time for Cliff DeYoung to explain just what the hell is going on here. Two months ago, a biotech firm messing around with DNA, genetic experiments, I don't know what the hell it was. They found a way to bring back dinosaurs. I think there was also something about a disease that caused women to give birth to dinosaurs? Uh, I don't know, it's probably not important. Also, the dialogue here kind of makes it sound like the dinosaurs were created as part of some big, well-funded biotech project, despite the fact that the whole premise of the first one was that Dr. Tiptree engineered her disease secretly behind people's back in order to try and end the human race. Even though this movie's plot is a copy of Aliens, as far as just hand-waving over stuff that was established in the previous movie, it has a lot more in common with something like Highlander 2. But now that Jesse isn't catatonic anymore, maybe he can help. Yeah, let me try. Oh, great, yeah, let the kid do it. Come on, Reed. I've been hacking into every terminal in this place for the last three months, trust me. I can hack into any mainframe, even if the Ethernet is coded through the firewall. 90s movie computer talk. But the kid does have some other ideas. There, see? Sub-level B. Right. There's dynamite in there. We could blow those things to hell. I mean, I was gonna use the dynamite to try and blow up the United Nations, but I suppose we could blow this place up instead. They go to get the dynamite, but I think this whole situation's made everyone a little jumpy. Shit! What? It's... Oh! What is it? It's a, it's a, it's a, I don't know what it is, but I... It's an iguana, stupid. Now we're talking. Remember, even if the dynamite doesn't work, you could always have Monk just fuck the dinosaurs and kill them with all the STDs he's got swimming around in his body. Cliff Young, however, seems to be against them getting the dynamite and decides to lock them inside. What are they gonna do? Works for me. Oh. Okay, that was easy. This team does not have the equipment to handle dinosaurs. They were really expecting to find ghosts in this place. 
And they weren't expecting dickhead bosses, either. Alright, John, there's only room for one prolific character actor in this movie. Oh. Hey, no fair! This isn't a tag team match. Fun fact, raptors only hunt prey that has no peripheral vision. It's a lot easier for them that way. Aw, oh, come on, man! That thing was just about to kill Monk! Looks like Cliff DeYoung has a lot more splaining to do. Is it the Yucca Mountain Repository for High-Level Atomic Waste. Weapons-grade plutonium, disabled nukes. The government has been spending a lot of time and money developing this site. Nukes, they got nukes here, they got nukes and dinosaurs. That's just perfect. Yeah, I'll say. This whole place could really use some focus. Cliff Young informs everyone that due to a leak in one of the facility's containment units, the entire place is about to go nuclear. But if they have Bishop make it to the colony's transmitter, he can remotely pilot the second dropship from their spaceship and... Uh... Wait, uh, sorry, that's aliens. I got a little confused there. Uh, what's the plan in this movie? Like the kids said, we crash the system. And when help arrives... Yes, help when arrive. help arrives, we blow the whole place. Okay, so just gonna ignore that whole place is full of nukes thing, huh? We blow the whole place. Ballsy, I like that. That'll trap them down on the lower levels. Blowing up a place filled with nukes is just gonna trap them? How tough are these fucking things? But in order to get the dinosaurs to trip the explosives, they're gonna need to attract them somehow. Have a nice trip, big boy. It's a ballsy, it's never ballsy. I feel happy, I'm fine, ha <laughs> Huh. Okay, that part I don't remember from Aliens. And despite the explosives, I don't know if it was a great idea to get these things' attention. It's the dinosaurs! They figured out our traps! They're trying to get in! Figured out what the hell you're talking about, man! They're lizards, man! How could they cut the power, man? They're animals! Watch Shit, they were so focused on setting up the explosives, they forgot to lock the damn doors. And surprise, lady, turns out you're not the Ripley of this movie. She is right to be scared right now. She knows what monsters do to women in Roger Corman movies. And if you thought this movie's been less gory compared to the first one... <laughs> There, that ought to fix that. And what the hell are you doing? Don't crawl around in vents. That's how characters from Aliens ended up getting killed. They actually make it through okay, probably because they couldn't find a way to fit the raptor puppets in there. Okay, now it might fit. They're not safe yet, though. Damn, falling debris. Monk's one weakness. In my will, leave my subscription to Hustler to my sister. While the others escape, Cliff Young stays behind with Monk, mainly because if he didn't, they wouldn't be able to copy this scene from Aliens. Now come on! Now come on, eat this! Look at so much! Ah, shit. You know, despite the dinosaurs and explosions, I think the biggest danger to the characters is their own clumsiness. Seriously, this was your own damn fault, idiot. Uh, I can't. <laughs> no, I was supposed to be the Ripley of this movie! Don't worry, he's fine. No, seriously, not only is Jack still alive, but his spine also isn't shattered into a million pieces. Forget copying Aliens, I think this movie just foreshadowed Unbreakable. Still, though, Jesse might want to go get some help. The emergency destruct system is now activated. The ship will detonate in T minus 10 minutes. No, 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 wrong alien movie. What the hell? He's getting rescued by Michael McDonald from Mad TV? Oh man, Jesse was really hoping for Phil Lamar. And you're doing this all wrong. The Ripley stand-in is supposed to go back to rescue the Newt stand-in, not the other way around. Thanks for coming back for me, Jesse. If I'd fallen another ten floors, I might have broken an ankle. Before they can leave, though, they have to face off against the Queen Dinosaur, also known as the T-Rex. I mentioned in my last video that they built a full-size T-Rex animatronic for the first Carnosaur movie, so it makes sense that they bring it back for the sequel. And hey, this time around they actually seem to use it a little bit. Even the actors seem impressed. Holy shit! You know, if you just have a couple lines in a low-budget horror movie, might as well make the most of them. Holy shit! 
And this guy really should have known that in a horror movie, the black guy always dies last. Given that we're now at the climax of the film, it's now time for one of our heroes to face off against the T-Rex with a power loader, which in this case is just going to be a forklift. Get away from him, broski! Uh... Uh, actually, I guess it doesn't matter now since he's dead as shit, but, you know, aliens. Boy, this movie really has no shame. This is totally ripping off the ending scene from the first movie. But I guess that is a good way to recycle some shots from it. Alright, time for Jesse to kill the T-Rex by blowing it out of the airlock. Or whatever he's supposed to do. I don't know if this plan's gonna work, though. Even if the T-Rex falls all the way, we know that's only gonna result in a few minor injuries. Alright, so the T-Rex is dead, at least according to the stock footage they used from the first movie. Time to get the hell out of here and blow this place. Even though I thought it was gonna blow up anyway, but whatever. The remote. Containment failure in 20 seconds. 19. Nah, I'm just kidding. Although, that would have been a good way to top the depressing ending of the first one. Now here's the part where they find out a dinosaur is stowed away on board with them. Oh wait, that's the first alien. Uh, never mind, the end. Unlike the first movie, Carnosaur 2 was a failure at the box office, resulting in all future entries going straight to video. And on a related note, this got a theatrical release? Seriously? It's kind of a shame this didn't do as well as the first movie, because I actually like this one a little bit better. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is absolutely shameless with regards to how blatantly it copies the plot of Aliens, but I think that helps make this movie more entertaining than the first one. I mean, let's face it, plot-wise, Aliens is a well-constructed, well-paced movie. Throw some dinosaurs in there? Same thing's basically true. And besides, this series started as an excuse to cash in on Jurassic Park anyway. It's not like it was ever a beacon of integrity, so fuck it, just do aliens with dinosaurs. There is one thing that bugs me, though. The movie never did answer just who in the hell this woman is. Now, oh, well, maybe that question will be answered in the third movie. That's right, I'm still going with this series. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Ooh, there it is. Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Chris Dolan, who asked me to review the movie Carnosaur 3, Primal Species. Boy, good thing I did the first two Carnosaur movies before doing this one, otherwise I'd have no idea what the hell was going on. I mean, that'd be like watching Halloween 3 without seeing the first two. And by that I mean the first two Carnosaur movies, because Halloween 3 has about as much to do with them as this movie does. Well, even though Carnosaur 2 underperformed at the box office, there's always the direct-to-video market, so screw it, might as well crank another one of these movies out. After all, gotta keep up with those Children of the Corn kids. Carnosaur 3, Primal Species, is the third entry in Roger Corman's Carnosaur series. Eh... Uh... Kind of. The movie was originally not going to be part of the Carnosaur series and was simply going to be titled Primal Species, and in some parts of the world that's what it's known as, as well as Dinosaur Crisis? No, no, the second movie was the one that was like Dino Crisis. However, partway through, Roger Corman figured, hey, it's got dinosaurs in it, might as well slap the Carnosaur name on there. Who cares if it doesn't really have anything to do with the other movies? Come to think of it, the second movie didn't really have anything to do with the first one either. I didn't have to do these movies in order at all. Oh well, I made it this far, might as well see this series through. So to recap the second movie, even though its plot was basically a copy of James Cameron's Aliens, just with dinosaurs, I actually found it to be more entertaining than the first one. So, does this trend continue with the third Carnosaur movie? <laughs> no. Roger Corman presents, we had some leftover dinosaur puppets, so fuck it, might as well see if we can make some more money. I will say this, at least the series fonts have continuously gotten better with each new entry, so nice to know where Corman's priorities were. And if you can't afford to get industrial light and magic to do your effects, just hire a company with two similar sounding words. These soldiers are really going to be surprised when they find out they're not in an Italian zombie movie, although they might have other stuff to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> I say, man. You know you have a small dick when you can pee directly facing the camera and I don't have to black box it. Oh. 
Oh shit, the dinosaurs are packing heat! Oh wait, I guess it was just these guys. If the second Carnosaur was the closest we'll ever get to a Dino Crisis movie, then I think this one's starting to look like a Counter-Strike adaptation. Terrorists win. And now some soldiers are trying to rescue hostages from an oil rig, I guess? Did I put in the right Roger Corman movie? What does any of this have to do with dinosaurs? Alfalfa, Buckwheat, you're dead. Oh, well, here's one connection to the previous movies. It's got Monk from Carnosaur 2 in it, so I guess he must have survived that explosion. Hey, if all the chlamydia and cocaine in his body wasn't enough to kill him, nothing can. And here's a twist. Turns out the terrorists are fake, and this is all just an exercise. But fake Albert Wesker here is a real terrorist? I guess? We're not even ten minutes in and I'm already confused. Anyway, the Colonel doesn't seem too impressed with his men's performance. Paul check! Sir! You some kind of donkey? Sir, just my dick, sir! I asked, are you some kind of dumbass donkey? Uh, no, sir, but actually donkeys really aren't that dumb. They're pretty intelligent creatures. All you have to do is, you know, take a look at their ears, sir. Nah, I think my dick joke was better. The troops get summoned back to base, but the colonel's not done berating people just yet. You're not riding in my jeep with that haircut, son. Hey, come on, it's the 90s. The Rachel was a very popular look back then. Looks like the terrorists from earlier have managed to steal themselves a truck full of Commodore 64s and prime McDonald's hamburger meat. But surprise, it's made out of dinosaurs. Aw, oh, damn it, no! No! Oh, no, I'm in a carnosaur movie. You call this uranium? I asked for uranium and you give me fucking reptiles! I gotta say, this guy really doesn't seem surprised that there's dinosaurs in there. Aw oh, man, I wanted uranium and instead all I got were monsters that have been extinct for millions of years? That is so disappointing and in no way amazing at all. O'Brien? And apparently the dinosaurs messed with the editing filters. Oh, and Michael McDonald from Mad TV has a small role in this, just like he did in the last Carnosaur movie, so... Connection? Why do I get the feeling that during the rap party for the previous movie, Roger Corman wrote another script and was like, Wait! I know how we can squeeze out another movie! Keep your weekend open, everybody! That helps to explain some of these lines. Holy shit! Look at this! Reminds me of Driver's Head. The fuck were your driver's ed classes like? And see if you can guess what happens to these guys. That's right, they get choppy edited to death. The Special Forces team from earlier gets called in to investigate the warehouse. Hopefully this goes smoother than that repair job Monk was on last year. I think I'm starting to figure out why this movie was made. Corman discovered he rented a warehouse and was like, well shit, I gotta do something with it. Who could have done something like this, sir? Looks like a serial killer loose with an axe. This reminds me of Junior Prom. Uh, that doesn't make any sense, sir. Hey, makes about as much sense as that driver's ed comment earlier. Here's another connection this movie has with the previous car. Carnosaur. It's also trying to be like aliens. I'm not too sure about this special forces team's training. Nice shooting, Tex. You just shot yourself a dead man. Yeah, but I shot the shit out of him, didn't I? Yeah, but I shot the shit out of him. Hey, I'll supply the stupid lines, okay, pal? Given that this movie reuses the dinosaurs they made for the previous entries, it figures that most of the movie's budget went towards cardboard boxes. Also, looks like in the time between movies, the raptors have been keeping their pimp hands stronger than ever. Well, the Special Forces guys don't seem to be having much luck. I think it's about time we had a scientist type to fill us in on what's going on. Carnosaurs? What the hell are you talking about? Look, Roger Corman wanted to cash in on Jurassic Park. That's basically all you need to know. These creatures are extremely dangerous. They'd be unstoppable if they were released in the general civilian population. Yeah, unless you shoot them. That'd probably stop them. And I might have jumped the gun by saying that this has no connection to the other movies. The Carnosaur Project was created several years ago by a brilliant but troubled geneticist. See? We kinda sorta referenced the first movie. That means we can call this a sequel. The army's informed that they're to try and capture the dinosaurs alive. That way Corman can keep using them in more movies. Within their regenerative DNA structure lie the answers to curing major diseases. We might even be able to cure that disease that causes women to give birth to dinosaurs that nobody seems to remember. 
But please, Doc, tell us about the dinosaurs. There are two males, Velociraptors and one female, Tyrannosaurus rex. The Velociraptor can grow to seven feet. Uh, yeah, sure, whatever you say, Doc. Okay, that's probably enough info. Besides, I don't think these guys are paying attention anyway. I can't believe we're hunting dinosaurs. Oh, great, this movie's gone from Counter-Strike to Monk Dinosaur Hunter. Damn, in this big, wide-open warehouse, gigantic dinosaurs could be hiding anywhere. <laughs> Oh, there they are. They were hiding in more choppy editing. I'm starting to think these guys might need a little help. Back off! What's going on, sir? We had Army and Special Forces uniforms and decided to use them both. Look, it's nice that they sent in some reinforcements to help you out, but you're looking for dinosaurs in a warehouse. How are you having so much trouble finding and shooting these things? They may be on an urgent mission to find deadly killing machines, but that doesn't mean they can't take several minutes to reenact a scene from over the top. Looks like you lose, knockoff Michelle Rodriguez. Well, what do you know? I guess I'm just the pussy after all. Well, you just lost to a guy with a jerry curl mullet, so yeah, it kind of does. All right, look alive, people. We got a lot of screen time to kill if we want to get this thing to feature length, so try and look busy. So, how are we going to capture these things? Paul Check will fire 200 cc's of Atrovet into the creature's hind quarters. Paul Check? Jinx. They plan to capture the raptors by luring them with a dangling piece of meat and then dropping a net on them. Seems like a pretty good plan. It was either that or set up a sign that said free bird seed and dropping an anvil on them. I feel like I'm waiting for a sighting of Bigfoot. Really? You sure this doesn't remind you of Driver's Ed for some stupid reason? Even if they manage to get the raptors, is the T-Rex hiding in a mouse hole or something? How in the hell do they not know where that is? Well, there's one raptor, but where's the other one? Hi! I would say this raptor outsmarted him, but it's less because she's a clever girl and more because these guys are a bunch of fucking idiots. Oh man, that thing was just about to kill Monk. Or whoever that guy's supposed to be in this movie. Well, the net trap didn't work. Looks like you'll have to try plan B, look around the warehouse. But hey, at least you managed to kill one of them. Amazing. You know how if you cut off a lizard's tail, it'll grow back eventually? Yeah. Well, that's what's happening with these damaged cells. They're repairing themselves at an incredibly accelerated rate. Wait, so the dinosaurs are healing themselves? Damn, I knew they shouldn't have mixed some Wolverine DNA in there. And that's not the only bad news. And there's something else. There's strong evidence to suggest that the T-Rex has begun breeding. Okay, I highly doubt that. There is no way they had enough money to build another one. And didn't you just say that the raptor was healing itself? <laughs> and forget the healing factor, the dinosaur's real secret weapon is the editor hates the soldiers and the audience. You know, Doc, I've given it some thought, and I think we should strongly reconsider trying to capture these things alive. Oh, and the dinosaurs have apparently moved from the warehouse to a boat. I know this because they show an establishing shot of a boat, and the characters say that's where they are now. One of the benefits of wasting a bunch of screen time showing the characters dicking around and not really doing anything is you get to just skip over scenes later in the movie. All right, remember, if anybody asks us what we're doing, we're inspecting the ship for drugs and the cameras are for the news. That ought to buy us enough time to finish filming before they catch on. Any idea as to where they may be hiding out? Okay, you're looking for a T-Rex, not a dropped contact lens. It really shouldn't be that hard to find. Jeez, Indiana Jones 5 is even dumber than I thought it would be. Remember, if you don't find the dinosaurs right away, you could always kill more time by arm wrestling again. Rant, remember, the raptors are sensitive to any movement. Er, uh, wait, maybe that's the T-Rex. Uh, I might be getting my Jurassic Park rules mixed up here. And again, no matter how important this mission is, there's always room for shenanigans. Well, that smells good. Smell like... Whoa, smells like driver's ed. We're still going with that joke, huh? Looks like they still haven't found the dinosaurs. Quick, try checking under the rugs. Maybe they're hiding there. Oh, never mind. There they are. Shit! Johnson, what the- Rance. Pull your team out of there and get them out of there now. No, don't leave the dinosaurs. Otherwise, it's going to take them two days to find them again. If they keep running around this place long enough, eventually they'll run into the cast of Gunhead. That is, if the killer editor doesn't get him first. Johnson. He's gone. Damn, and Johnson had just two days to finish filming his role in another Roger Corman movie. 
In addition to killing people, the raptors also disable the elevator. Now these guys are gonna have to take the stairs. Uh, you're in the hold, sir. Looks like you're gonna have to get creative. Funny. I think that's what Roger Corman said to the director after he asked how he was supposed to make a movie with two dinosaur puppets in a warehouse. And where the hell has the T-Rex been this whole time? They're eggs. Cool. Oh no, now that thing that was trying to kill you still wants to kill you. But on the bright side, at least it kills Monk. Oh man, I can't believe I made it through Driver's Ed just to die like this. Considering you're down to your last soldiers, you might want to consider a new plan. We have enough C4 to ignite the ship's fuel supply. We have a remote detonator. Plant the C4 in the right places. We time the charges for a delayed sequence. And when help arrives, yes. help when arrive. help arrives, we blow the whole place. Okay, but just remember, we couldn't afford a forklift this time, so you won't be able to kill the T-Rex that way. They begin planning the charges, but they get interrupted when they find out there's a Food of the Gods movie also being shot here. War frats. At this point, I sure as hell would rather be fighting these little critters. Oh yeah? You sure about that? Considering how easily the dinosaurs in this movie are able to sneak up on people, I'm beginning to think they took stealth lessons from the T-Rex in The Last Dinosaur. That and the editor of this movie still really wants these people to die. At first the characters had trouble finding the dinosaurs, now they can't seem to avoid them. T-Rex is here. What are you talking about? We left that thing up two levels. Man, these guys have really got to stop going in rooms big enough for the T-Rex to fit in. And listen, we managed to squeeze three movies out of this mechanical T-Rex. I say it's about time we blew it up. Alright, the charges are armed, now let's blow this thing and finish the movie. That way we can still hit up some bars before they close. patient for a few weeks. Wow, I haven't been this happy since Driver's Ed. Okay, can somebody please explain that to me? I still don't get it. Well, looks like they got all the dinosaurs. But wait a second, aren't there two more unofficial sequels? I didn't know what that guy was so scared of. It's not like this ending is ever going to be followed up on. So that's Carnosaur 3, Carnosaur with a Vengeance. And after watching this one... I think I owe the first two movies an apology. In my previous videos, I was surprised to learn the first two Carnosaur movies even got theatrical releases since they felt so much like direct-to-video movies. But compared to this one... yeah, they do seem like theatrical releases. While the first two movies may have just been made to cash in on Jurassic Park, they at least seemed like the filmmakers had some idea of what they were supposed to be doing going in. Carnosaur 3 feels like it was thrown together over a weekend using leftovers, which is probably not too far off from what it is. Not to mention that if you take out all the numerous time-killing filler scenes, the movie's plot probably could have been wrapped up in about half an hour. But hey, at least the movie assures us that no dinosaurs were harmed during filming, although I kinda doubt that claim. While this was the last movie to use the Carnosaur name, there were two more unofficial sequels with Raptor and the Eden formula, movies who are only connected because they use stock footage and effects from Carnosaur, which I guess means they have as much connection with the Carnosaur series as those movies do with each other. So with that in mind, am I going to continue on with this series by doing those movies next? Hell no! I did the three main movies despite them barely having anything to do with each other. I think I've more than paid my Roger Corman dinosaur movie dues here. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Hello. Bullshit! <laughs>